Hi friends, in our last session, we have completed with our chapter machine tool structure. In today's session, we are going to start with our new chapter that is design of guideways and power screw. This is Fazan Kagri and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin. Now, in today's session, we are going to see functions, requirements and types of guideways. And the first question on the spot comes is that what is guideways? So as the name itself suggests, guideways is going to guide the machine tool elements on a specified path. It is going to provide a uh, it is going to provide a direction to the elements, right? For example, tail stroke can move on the guideways, right? Similarly, carriage can move on the guideways. So we can say from this, the basic function of guideways is to ensure that the machine tool operative element, which is carrying a workpiece or a cutting tool moves along a predetermined path which is generally a straight line in case of lathe machine, drilling machine, boring machine. Okay and in some cases guideways are circular specifically in case of vertical turret lathes, boring machines. Okay so now what is the major requirement of a guideways that must be satisfied. So the first major requirement is that high accuracy and surface finish of guideway surface is required. The guideway should be machined such a way that it has a good surface finish so that no jerk or vibration is produced while moving the operative element. Okay. Second important requirement is high accuracy of travel which is possible only when the deviation of the actual path of travel of an operative member from a predetermined path is minimum. Okay, then durability which depends upon the ability of a guideways to retain the initial accuracy of a manufacturing and travel. Okay, next point and a major requirement is low value of frictional resistance should be acting on a guideway surface to ensure less wear and tear. Next point, minimum possible variation of coefficient of friction that is mu which we use f equals to mu n right frictional force equals to coefficient of friction into normal force so mu has to be minimum as possible which is going to reduce the frictional resistance okay and high rigidity there is resistance to deformation should be much higher and next good damping properties is required now as we know that damping means a resisting force or we would say a resistance to the vibrating body so higher is a damping force or we can say higher is a resisting force lesser will be the vibration of the guideways or we would say vibrating element. Okay, so good damping properties is the must required of guideways for the guideways. Okay, now based upon the nature of friction between the contacting surface of a guideways and operative member, it can be classified into two types. So first type is guideways with a sliding friction which is also known as slide ways. Why? Because sliding motion takes place in that case that is guideways with sliding friction. And next type is guideways with a rolling friction also known as anti-friction ways. Okay, these guideways are known as anti-friction ways. So remember two types of guideways. First name is a slide ways and second is a anti-friction ways. Okay. Now let us see. So first we need to see types of slideways. Now, now as you can see in a diagram, there is a guideway shown and this inclined portion is an operative element. Okay, which is going to move on this guideway. Now let's say this operative member is making an angle alpha with this guideway. Okay. Now Q is a force which is exerted in an upward direction. So basically it is required that whenever there is a sliding motion between two members that is a guide vein and an operative member, the frictional resistance obviously will take place. So for reducing that we need to make use of oil film. Okay, we are going to use oil film. So there are, so there are basically three cases. First is a dry, second is a semi-liquid and third is a liquid, fully liquid, fully filled with liquid. If it is of a dry case, which means there is no fluid used between the operative member and guideways. In that obviously frictional resistance will be much higher. In case of a semi-liquid, we can say that the operative element will be lifted up slightly 
as well as it will also come in contact with the guide waste. Okay, and in the third case, that is a liquid fully filled with liquid case, the operative element will be totally lifted up by means of a hydrodynamic force exerted by the liquid film. Okay, that would be in an upward direction. So you can see that hydrodynamic force which would be exerted by the liquid on the operative element is shown by Q. That is, oil is exerting a force in an upward direction. That is, it is going to lift the operative element. Whereas, we can say that this operative element has some weight, right? So that weight will be exerted in a downward direction. So that weight is represented by capital G over here. And over here, V is a representation of a sliding velocity. Okay, so remember upward force is a hydrodynamic force. Now why hydrodynamic? So there are two types of forces. First is a hydrostatic and second is a hydrodynamic. In case of a hydrodynamic, the liquid is going to move within this, uh, we would say within this space between operative element and the slide waste. Okay, whereas in case of a hydrostatic, the liquid is going to remain stationary. Okay. So we can say that since our operative element is going to move, which means a movement of this fluid or a film is also going to take place. So the force that would be exerted is called a hydrodynamic force. That is hydro means liquid and dynamic means force in motion. Okay. Now let us see, depending upon the lubrication condition at the interface, as I told, that is contacting surface, the friction between the sliding surface may be described as dry friction semi-liquid and liquid okay now dry friction occurs when there is no lubricant between a sliding surface now this is rarely if ever encountered in machine goods which means this type this case is rarely used there will always be a liquid provided either a semi-liquid type or a fully filled with liquid now whenever a body slides with respect to another body there is a lubricant between the two the sliding body tends to rise or float due to hydrodynamic action of a lubricant film which you can see as I have discussed in a figure. Okay, the hydrodynamic force that is Q in general be represented by the equation. So there is an equation to find out hydrodynamic force Q which is equal to KH into V. Now what is KH? So KH is a constant that depends upon the geometry of a sliding surface. Wage angle alpha parameter of the lubricant film and viscosity of the liquid lubricant so we know that viscosity is a thick it is going to indicate the thickness of the liquid okay how much thicker a liquid is higher is the viscosity which means the flow of a liquid will, will be much low slower okay and lower is a viscosity which means easily a liquid can flow okay now v is a sliding velocity as i have told if the weight of the sliding body is capital g the resultant normal force acting on it will be how much? So resultant force acting on a guide base is N denoted by capital N which is equal to Q minus G. Okay, we can also say N is a normal force acting in a downward direction that is on a guide base. Okay, so it would be how much? So Q minus G. Now Q will be greater that is hydrodynamic force will be greater in case of liquid is fully filled between the contacting surface. So we can say that it is evident from the equation that as a sliding velocity increases, the hydrodynamic force also increases. Now as long as Q is less than G, the sliding body rests on the stationary body and the friction conditions are of semi-liquid type. Okay, which means that as long as Q is less than G, which means in this diagram you can see if Q is less than G that means the weight of operative element is greater and it will exert a force in a downward direction or we can say that it is a condition of semi liquid type in that uh, operative element will slightly come in contact with this guide waves. Okay. Now under this condition two bodies are partially separated by the lubricant fill but partially experience a metal to metal contact. Okay. Now when Q is greater than G we can say the resultant normal force on the sliding body begins to act upwards and we can say body is going to float. Okay. The sliding surface are now completely separated by the lubricant film and their interface experience a liquid friction. Which means if liquid is completely filled, so in that case Q will be greater than G. Okay. So the body will be lifted up by means of a hydrodynamic force. Now. 
the slide ways in which a permanent lubricant layer separating the sliding surface is obtained due to hydrodynamic action are known as hydrodynamic slide ways at a low sliding speeds a permanent lubricant layer between the sliding surface can be obtained by pumping the liquid into the interface under pressure high enough to lift the sliding board such slide ways are known as hydrostatic slide ways hence for the term slide ways un unaccomplished by qualifying description would imply slide ways operating under condition of semi liquid friction now next is types of anti friction ways okay so anti friction ways may be classified on the basis of shape of the rolling elements into two types first roller type anti friction ways using cylindrical roller and second ball type anti friction ways using uh, spherical balls now both these types may or may not have a provision for recirculation of the rolling element okay so we can say a type of a ball bearing right ball bearing in that uh, we can say a sliding or we would say a rolling contact will be maintained okay similarly a roller is used in that line contact will be maintained uh, maintained between the two contacting surfaces okay <clears throat> next is design of slide ways now you can see the diagram of a slide ways in which a location of grooves in a semi liquid friction slide way is shown so there are two types of grooves you can see first is a cross groove shown and second one is a longitudinal groove which is shown on the guide way okay now slide ways are distinguished by relatively high coefficient of friction between the sliding surfaces this results in considerable wear reducing the life as well as adversely affecting the machining accuracy for proper functioning of slide ways it is therefore imperative that a friction be kept as low as possible by ensuring that a certain minimum amount of lubricant is always present between the sliding surface this may be done by automatic means or by operative who oils the sliding surface from time to time now one of the popular method of increasing the shear of liquid friction in slide way and thus reducing the friction at the interface is slide ways to provide lubricating grooves on the guiding surface so there is a benefit that if we provide a lubricating grooves on a sliding on a guiding surface so we can say that a lubricating grooves are going to help to reduce the friction which means we can uh, reduce the coefficient of friction of that material by applying uh, lubricants in the grooves that is longitudinal groove and cross grooves now cross grooves are spaced at an optimum distance and are often connected by longitudinal grooves you can clearly see from a diagram the specific functional features of slide ways dictate the following additional design consideration besides the general one which are explained you can see the list is given first it should be possible to provide effective lubrication without much difficulty <coughs> second there must be a provision for compensation of possible wear and third the material of slide ways should have a high wear resistance so these are the specific functional features of a slide ways okay so we need to keep this in mind and what is a longitudinal groove and cross groove and its functions that is an operator can provide oil within this sliding surfaces from time to time okay or an automatic uh, we can say arrangement can be done to uh, to fit the lubricants within the grooves in order to reduce the friction between the operative member and the guide ways that is our slide ways okay guys so in today's session we are keeping up till here and in today's session we have discussed the functions and requirements along with the types of guide ways in that we have seen uh, types of slide ways that is first is slide way and second anti friction guide ways in next session we are going to see materials of the guide ways along with that profiles there is different profiles of the guide ways so till then stay tuned and thank you all <laughs>